Hello, let's do some examples of a labor market and um, how many workers we should hire, what we should pay them. Uh, this is important if you're a manager because you want to get the most out of your employees in order to profit maximize and get yourself a raise or make the most money for your own company. If you're an employee, this is important to think about. It helps you to think through when you want to raise. Uh, if you can get more productive, can you get one? and so on and so forth. So, got a couple examples here. This one is a uh, perfectly competitive labor market. That means all workers are the same. And I'm gonna hire and pay them all the same. Uh, and in this case, I'm gonna pay the workers 200. So wage is 200, okay? Uh, the market for frozen peas, so the price of frozen peas gives us $4 a bag of pea. And then the fixed costs are $500. So it's not really relevant here, but um, it's giving us that information anyway. And uh, so here I've got, this is total quantity. This is number of workers. So what I wanna know is how many workers to hire. And the condition for that is I'm gonna hire workers up until the wage equals the value of the marginal product of labor. So what I have to pay them should equal the value that they bring to me. And if one is bigger than the other, I'm gonna cut back on one of them, okay? So what this is really, uh, we've seen this before because the wage is the same as the supply of workers, which is the marginal cost. And this is gonna equal uh, the value to me, which is the marginal benefit, okay? So again, this is profit maximization in a different form, just in the labor market because it's the firm that's buying the work, okay? So I need to know marginal product of labor, which remember is the change in quantity over the change in labor. And then I want to know the value of the marginal product of labor, which is the price times the marginal product of labor. So we don't really care about that first thing there because there's no such thing as a negative one worker, right? So we care about the first worker. So I'm going to quickly do the marginal product of each worker. Okay. And then I'm going to multiply all of those by 4 because that's the price. Okay, so 40, 320, 4280. Okay, so then I want to know how many workers do I hire when the wage is $200. Okay, so first worker, do I hire them? Yes. Okay, because the value of the first worker is 240 to the company. I only have to pay them 200. I'm going to pocket the $40 and now I'm going to be happy. Okay, next one I'm going to hire them because I'm going to pay them 200. They bring in 320. The next one, 440. The next one, 280. The next one, 240. And then when I get to this worker, I'm not going to hire this worker. Okay. So profit maximizing at 200. This worker only brings us $80 but we have to pay them 200, so we're gonna lose $120 on this on this one worker. So, um, why do we care about this? Well, if I'm the manager and I've already hired this worker, how can I get them more productive? Or can I change their wage in some way? Um, is there something I can do to help motivate the worker? And if I'm the worker, so that I don't lose my job, or how that I get promoted or get hired, uh, how do I increase that productivity, right? So what, what, what can I do? Okay, so then uh, the second part is if the price of frozen peas decreases by $2 a bag, so now the price drops down to $2, what's the deal? So we just calculate a new value of the marginal product of labor. Okay, so this is this times 2, so 120, uh, 160, 220, uh, 140, 20, and uh, 40, oops, okay. So now, do I hire these workers? Okay, so first worker, uh, they cost me 200. I have to pay them, or, or they cost me 200. I earn 120 from their labor. I don't want that first worker. I don't want that second worker. I do want this worker. I don't want that worker. I don't want that worker, okay. So for this firm, they're either gonna have to increase productivity, decrease the wage, or um, shut down in the short run uh, and exit the market in the long run because they can't make a profit. So 
So this is an important decision for for a firm. Uh, just this, just today, GE made a calculation uh, like this and uh, laid off a bunch of workers. Right. So this this kind of thing happens all the time. Here's another one. Uh, so I've got how many workers? Uh, it's, I'm gonna there's a typo there. Uh, should they hire? Uh, if the price of output is fifty cents, and each wage and and wage is eight eight dollars, so uh, here it's fifty cents, fifty cents, fifty cents, fifty cents, fifty cents, fifty cents, and fifty cents. Okay, the total revenue is price times quantity. Value of the marginal product of labor is the marginal product of labor times price of the product and the marginal product is the change in quantity over the change in labor okay so these are all units of one so that the denominator doesn't really matter uh, so I'll just do this one quickly okay total revenue now is um, okay so 20 so it's 10 Uh, 42.5 50 cents or so um, half would be 50 so it's just under 50 so 47 Point five is that right? Yep, that's right. Okay, Whew, sorry. Uh, and then fifty dollars. Okay, so the value of marginal product of labor uh, is going to be marginal product times the price. So this is going to be ten, and then this is going to be fifteen, and this is going to be ten, and this is going to be. 750 and this is going to be 5 and 250 okay so what's going on here I gotta pay the workers eight dollars so do I hire the first worker yes do I hire the second worker yes do I hire the third worker yes do I hire the that worker no no and no because they're more expensive than that so I'm gonna hire these three workers and uh, that's how it goes okay um, and um, something to look at here, one thing that's kind of neat about this is the value of the marginal product of labor, if you look at it, is the marginal product times the price, but if you look at the total revenue column, it also works out that total, the change in total revenue, okay, sometimes called the marginal pro, um, revenue product, is the same as the value of the marginal product of labor. So they're actually the same thing uh, at two things. I'll let you work out um, what happens if the price goes up to $3, okay? Next one I wanna do in a, is in Excel. And uh, this one's puzzles. We sell the puzzles for $10. How many workers we hire and the wage is uh, $500 per week. So I've already got this one uh, loaded up here. So I'll show you how to do this one in Excel. So marginal product, and then remember the wage was 500 and the price uh, was $10. Okay, and so I've got the, all this set up here. Um, let's move this over here. So wage, 500, price, 10. Okay, so marginal product. You don't care about that okay so it's going to be this minus this actually it's uh, nope it, is, it was that way okay so formula is this minus this and just copy that all the way down so now I've got the marginal product okay just make sure the sounds going yep uh, then I'm going to multiply the marginal product of labor times uh, the price here and I want the price to stay, so I'm going to put dollar signs in front of it, uh, and then this gives me the value of the marginal product of labor. And if you if you would like, you can uh, you can do like uh, something like profit per worker. 
Okay, so you can take the value of the marginal product of labor and subtract the wage we're going to pay them. So that first worker, we make $1,000 from them. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that formula and I'm going to keep hiring workers up until the sixth worker. Okay, what's cool about Excel, and you, if you're really running a business, you could say, well, what happens if we got to cut the price of the puzzles down to $8? What happens here? And so I was hiring six workers. Now I'm going to have to let some workers go. I'm going to have to let these workers go. And uh, I'm only going to hire four workers now, right? Price of puzzles goes up to $12. I can hire those six workers back, or those two additional workers back. I'm still not going to hire that seventh worker. I could ask myself, what price do I need in order to hire the seventh worker? And be right around thirteen dollars, right, to hire that second seventh worker. Uh, now, if the wage changes, if the wage goes down to four hundred, what what happens here? Well, I'm not going to hire an additional worker, but if I can do like three eighty, then I can hire that eighth worker. All right. So uh, this is a pretty cool tool here. We'll go back to PowerPoint here. Here's a practice one you can do. I suggest you do it uh, for the test, and uh, we're all set there.